Good afternoon. Talk a little bit about adjusting the double drive wheel. So I have my old double drive wheel that I picked up. It's built in 1968. It has a single drive band wrapped twice. So it's a really long drive band. The original drive band broke. I am using a wool um, two-ply yarn that I made off of my other wheel and this is working really well so that's that's one thing so your drive band is a single drive band wrapped twice at one point there's a crossover the crossover if you're gonna spin clockwise the crossover of the drive band is on the bottom if you're going to spin counterclockwise, your crossover is going to be on top. And that's so the thing doesn't pop off your wheel. It's easy to change. Right now I have it set up for clockwise spinning. So if I need to counterclockwise for plying, all you do is you take one band and you flip it over and take the other band and flip it over. And now you've got your crossover at the top. Your bottom is still going to be crossed until you take one spin and then it'll fix itself. So since I'm doing clockwise spinning I want it back to where I had it but that's how you change it. It's real fast, real easy. Some people don't know that. So I'm on the smaller of the two worlds the whirls for the flyer are, are larger than for the bobbin and that way they're both turning but at different speeds so there's you can always have an uptake of yarn onto here but you want to adjust your band to where it's just working uh, you if you back it off to the point where everything just slides. As you can see, everything's just sliding, nothing's happening. That's too loose. And so then you tighten it back up. So you screw it in, you'll, you'll see how it works. And then you spin it. So now the bobbin's spinning a little bit and sort of spinning, sort of slipping. So it's still not loose enough, or <clears throat> not tight enough, excuse me. So tighten it a little bit more, turn it. The flyer is just now turning, but still not quite enough. Tighten it a little bit more. You want that flyer to spin, that's what you want. Let that flyer spin. So I'm going to unwrap my line here. So the flyer's still not spinning quite enough. And if I just tug a little bit on my thread, I can back my bobbin off backwards. So I'm still a little bit too loose. I'm going to tighten up just a little bit more. Now the flyer's working. Let me treadle it to see, see what happens. That's sort of okay. It's still a little bit loose. Bobbin's, bobbin's working, but I want a little bit more, not quite so much slippage. So I'm going to tighten it just a wee bit more. And that's it. That's all you need. And then you can draft and go to work. So I have mine really loose because I'm running very thin thread-like yarn. And because it's thin, I don't want it to yank out of my hand. I want it to just take up enough Like so, and if I pull back on a little bit, I can pull my bobbin backwards. There's enough slip 
on the belt to allow that. And that's what you, you also want that too. Um, if you have thicker yarn, you're gonna want it tighter. But if you go too tight, your drive band's gonna pop off. So you have to find that fine adjustment to where you're not slipping too much and it's pulling just enough and, and the flyer has to turn. Um, just like that. And that's it, it's real easy. It is a real easy system. But if you go too tight, it'll it'll uh, pop off the drive band, and you'll and and everything will be so tight it'll want to yank it out of your hand. And so you want it really loose, just enough to do the job. Don't want any more than just enough to do the job. And it, and that's for any size thickness of yarn that you're going to use. Um, just a, a note on the double drive wheels. All your points here where your leather, leather bushings are, you want to keep them oiled. I use a small little thing of oil and just pop the top off and put a drop. That's it, just a drop. That's all you need. Little drop goes a long ways. The leather will soak up the oil. You don't want it to drip and drop on the floor. You don't want it to drip and get on your yarn or anything like that, because then you have to wash it off, which you don't want to do. So those have to be oiled. The axles on your wheel should be oiled. So I can take my peg out, slide my holder off. And here I can put just a touch more oil than I would there. And then I'd slip my piece in that holds everything and lock the wheel. That way the wheel doesn't jump. Also on the footman arm, there's a, on your, on your crankshaft here, there's a spot that you want to oil as well. And again, Take just a little bit, stick it in there, squeeze just a tiny little bit of oil, and you're good to go. So these are really good. You can buy them on uh, Amazon uh, cheap. It's uh, Hops, H-O-P-P-E-S, uh, lubricating oil, uh, typically at gun shops. You can find them. But find them on eBay. They're nice. I like having a little tip here makes it easy to put the oil exactly where you want it. So all those points you need to oil keeps everything running smooth. The other thing is, is on this piece here, this piece will twist. So you want that bushing correctly on the uh, shaft of your flyer. If it's cockeyed too much, it'll put too much drag and resistance and it won't spin smoothly. So just find that adjustment. This side doesn't spin this one does. Um, and that's about it. Um, stopping your wheel. A lot of times you'll stop the wheel in the, in the uh, crankshaft arm and footman rod are gonna be in the up position. And then it'll just kind of drop back down and everything will kind of unwind itself. And you don't wanna do that. So you wanna be watchful. So when that wheel goes to the bottom, just Put your hand on it and stop it. It's real easy to do. Then you just use your hand to get it started. So I'll show you here. Um, so spinning away, spinning away, and I need to stop. I'll find this, the point and just stop it. That way nothing backs up. And that's what you want. And then on my wheel, on my flyer, I have all my hooks. On this side, I have no hooks on the back side, like some of the other older wheels of this style. Um, having them on this side, they're slightly off from each other, so that means I can alternate them. 
one side to the other. When you alternate it to the other side, it creates a little bit more drag. So you have to be aware of that. It may not take up on the bobbin as easy, so you may have to slightly tension it a little bit more to take up for that added bit of tension. These hooks are kind of old uh, from 1968, so they're not super smooth, but they do work. As you can see, I'm doing this really thin thread. Practicing my thread making for my loom. Because I want to get that good at making yarn that thin. Thread thin. When I'm done, they're going to call me the thread master. <laughs> and so... I'm not interested in making yarn right now to make knitted hats or anything, but regardless of what you do, um, that's how you adjust a double drive wheel. Double drive wheels are not designed for, for bulky art yarn. They're designed for thinner yarns um, and, and smooth yarns, uh, not too, not too uh, bulky arty, arty type yarns. If you want to do art yarns, I would get a different different type and style of wheel, and uh, and also bigger orifice and all that to handle the the, the bulkiness. Um, and they have better tensioning for for that kind of stuff. So these wheels were designed a long time ago, and they were designed to make thread type yarn because that's the kind of yarn that was made on, on looms to make cloth really fine cloth and then cut out and sewn into clothing whatever so um, that's their purpose and that's what I'm learning how to do and uh, and for that now that I've kind of figured out how to get everything adjusted properly um, I'm very pleased with being able to make thread, thread thin yarn without breaking because I was having issues with breakage because I had everything too tight and uh, it's just a matter of playing. If it's not working then you need to readjust and change how you're doing things and that's it and it's just a matter of an adjustment just really fine Fine adjustments, you'll figure it out. So I'm not treadling too fast, not treadling too slow, I'm keeping the flywheel moving, and that's what you want. And uh, just the weight of the flywheel going around keeps this thing going good. And I can do uh, short, short drawbacks and, and make semi-long draw if I want to. Let's see everything's like I like it, then I'll just let it feed right in. And then I can do the same again. Do the semi, semi long draw, which I'm getting better at. And it also helps when you have your adjustments very light, so they don't yank. And then you can do long draw really well. And that's your key to long draw, is not having that wheel pull it out of your hands. You want to be able to just lightly be able to pull this along and long draw you can if you get good at it from what I hear you can you can actually make quite a bit of yarn in, uh, in short order but you still want to try and keep your consistency for the size yarn that you're making, whether it's thread weight or or larger for knitting things like that. So I'm getting myself to the point where I'm just a nat naturally going for that thin thin. So I'm gonna stop here, bring that around the bottom and as you can see I lost it here so this just kind of fell apart because it's really light airy 
Um, that happens when you're spinning thin. Things just kind of fall apart. So you just kind of put it all together and just keep on going. Keep enough twist. Keeps the, the threads together without falling apart. And it's that, that twist. You want to keep that tension and twist in it until you get it plied. Or that you get it uh, put on your loom. Um, I heard that you can wash or get your yarn wet and then let it dry to help set that twist. And so that's my next that's my next thing I'm gonna do is do these higher twist singles and then wet them and then let them dry and see what it's like after it dries. Because you don't want it to felt together because you still have to put it onto your loom. So that's your adjustments. your adjustments for your wheel and your drive band. No matter what drive band you use, these are wool two ply. Um, most everybody uses cotton. Since you're going really light and loose to, to make it work, um, the wool works, but wool can snag on itself, so I have to be careful. I will admit that uh, cotton, hemp, something like that would probably be the best. So there you have it, and you can use this technique, adjustment technique, on the wheels that are 200 years old and the wheels, double drive wheels that are five years old or even brand new. So that's how you deal with a double drive wheel. Um, this is also single treadle. It's not a double treadle. Treadle doesn't have anything to do with how you set your tension. There you have it. Have a good day, and we will talk to you later.